set up this way. Um, if you want to ask a question and you don't want to be known who you are, make up a name. So it's me, Trevor, asking a question. Right? So just know that, that you could be identified if you say your name. <laughs> Nobody does, but just so you know. Um, quickly, calculators. I think uh, graphing is really important so that you can see things. I don't really like the screens on the calculators that you have, but that's what we have. Um, if you don't have a calculator and you're in the biosciences, borrow one from someone so you don't have to shell out the whatever hundred some dollars that it is. I don't care what calculator you use. So if you have the Inspire, it doesn't matter to me. I, I, it's up to me to design the questions so that you know, I can. I'm really creative when I come up with questions. Um, I gave you a course description here that's beyond the catalog requirements, and I will uh, read this to you. Um, I am interested in medical applications, current and relevant medical applications, not the ones that are in your textbook. I look at the ones in your textbook, but I wonder, you know, I work with primarily doctors, and I don't see them looking at those applications. For example, I'm working right now on predicting long-term outcomes preoperatively during bariatric surgery because they need to choose the right surgery. That's a current relevant application um, and that's a real application and those are the ones I'm interested in and so I gave you some things that I um, I'm probably going to talk about sometime or other but I don't want to confine myself to those applications if you're interested in something feel free to feel free to pitch it out and say look what's the mathematics behind this um, pediatric uh, growth curves we're going to do that today metabolic scaling laws how your metabolism works that's on every disease state you have to worry about metabolic rates. In fact, my father has dementia and he's losing his body temperature and it's fluctuating because his body's trying to stabilize itself. So at any disease state, this is really important. Interuterine growth restriction. What happens in utero is really important because it sets us for the rest of life. Eating behavior. I'm also interested in psychology. It always boils down to that. Evaluating changes in body temperature. Physiological responses to exercise. I like exercise a lot. I'm always curious about exercise. Um, and much more. There's many more idea, things that we have that are applications that are fingertips to learn, to use, to motivate the, the math. And um, what I want from you, I want you to be able to use the data and the examples that we have to make conclusions from them and even make diagnosis from them. Believe me, that's what's being done today. That's what personalized medicine is all about. They're giving you a prediction and you're making a decision about that prediction. And it doesn't matter what field in healthcare you're going into. Um, I know that we're starting a nursing school here. I'm actually on that committee. And in that committee, we see personalized medicine is there too. Nurses are the ones delivering it. I'm very organized, not for myself, um, because I, I, I'm a confused person. So I get really lost after a while. So I have to have everything organized beforehand. So you have all your dates that exams are given. Prior, we have in-class assignments. We work a lot in class to understand material. You have homework. I generally don't give web assigned homework, but I'm aligning myself with the other professors that are teaching Calc A, and they're using web assign, so they really want me to use web assign as well. Um, but it's going to be due every Monday. You have a, a couple nice things about the web assign. If you turn it in 24 hours early, you get extra credit. Um, and uh, I have stuff set up in there so that there's incentives for you to get it done in a timely manner so you're not stressed out. In my experience, the reason I don't like WebAssign is I feel like people open it up 10 minutes before it's due and then they get pissed because it's a little bit harder than what they thought it was going to be. Um, quizzes we have every Monday. We have one next Monday already. And I think the final exam might be the wrong date, but I'll fix that later. Homework we have uh, every time to, uh, delivered through WebAssign. It's graded. I think I'd like an option, not right now, I'm just trying to figure out how to do this, for you to make videos if you want to. And the students who decide that they'd like to make videos instead of actually doing a bunch of assigned homework, like explaining how to do a problem, I'll give you a rubric, you'll have less homework to do. So because the cost of making a video is a little bit more intense. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit more fun, I think, than sitting there and grinding through a million web assigned problems. So it'll, I'll leave that up to you. And that was an idea given to me by my senior level class. Um, quizzes will always be at the beginning of the, of the period. Uh, if you walk in late, you're going to be counted absent because I'm not going to be handing out quizzes in staggering motions. And I also will not um, give you extra time so you can think through problems for the first time during the quiz. You know, you just have to have it down. Okay, policies. The only one that's really important is cell phones. 
If you're looking at your crotch and smiling during class, I have a pretty good idea. I hope that you are looking at your cell phone. Put your cell phone away in the class. I also have cell phone um, titus. <laughs> I'll pull it out during meetings. Um, in fact, I'll be probably texting you during my uh, meetings. Don't do as I do, do as I say. I might even pull it out in here. You're welcome to remind me of the cell phone policy. Um, I'm a total technophile and I love my cell phone. So if you see it being pulled out in the class, let me know, hey, remember Dr. T, no cell phones. And I might have to remind you, right? So put your cell phones away now. If you have them out, they shouldn't be up and available. It's too tempting. I try my best to leave mine in the office. Quizzes, you have two drops. Exams, you have one. I don't sit there and be you know, judge duty, decide whose excuse is valid, whose excuse is invalid. Some people don't speak that much to the professor. How do I know what their excuses are, what their reasons are for why they do things? So I don't like to do that, especially with 70 students total. That's too much. So I just account that in. So if you are sick, two drops. Um, if you miss class, it's a no-brainer. If you miss class, it's on YouTube. So you don't have to ask me what I missed. So it's there. Um, and I try to do my best grading with minimal bias by having a rubric on the side. I think this is really important to me to know that um, I'm treating all students fairly. So I have a rubric on the side on each problem so you know where the grade is going to be cut up and you know where the expectations are. And oftentimes I'll tell you beforehand, this is how I'm going to grade this problem. So you don't get surprised and say, oh, she graded everything based on writing the first few steps down and I didn't write them down. You'll usually know I have, I don't like surprises myself. And there's some frequently asked questions there. You, you can read that on your own. Any questions? Everything's recorded. Right. If, if uh, the university requires me to be here, I'm, I'm required to be here. I live in Randolph, and it's really hilly, and sometimes I can't get down. Um, I have, I guess one of the things I've changed since I've been an assistant professor is that I don't risk my life now to come to class. So if that happens, I still will record the class and put it online, right? So I'll let you know if, um, I'll make a judgment in that case. Textbooks, how I use books, um, and how I feel about books. Should I shut off my recording? <laughs> Maybe I should shut off my recording.